When you stare into the mirror, do you really see a human? Think again. Your body is made up of about 30 trillion human cells, but it also houses 38 trillion bacteria. Yep, you might not even be the majority in your own body. In fact, these microbes have over 10 million genes, which is 500 times more than your human DNA. So, who's in control here, really? This microbial partnership begins the moment you're born. While you were living in your mom's womb, everything was sterile. But as soon as labor kicks in, bam, it's microbe time. If you were born vaginally, you pass through the birth canal, getting coated in a carefully prepared layer of bacteria, mostly beneficial ones like lactobacillus. In late pregnancy, your mom's body even tweaks her vaginal flora to make sure you get the VIP treatment. These microbes become your first immune trainers, teaching your body to distinguish friend from foe. But if you were born by C-section, it's a different story. You miss out on this ancient bacterial inheritance. Instead, you meet microbes from the hospital, airborne strangers, surgical gloves, hospital bed sheets. These unfamiliar bugs like the coevolutionary history of mom's microbiota, which could double your risk of developing allergies or asthma later in life. Either way, once we enter the world, we stop being purely human. We become miniature microbial ecosystems on legs. And it goes deeper. Roll the clock back two billion years. That's when our ancestral cell swallowed a free living bacterium and instead of digesting it, made a deal. That bacterium became our mitochondria, tiny power generators inside every one of our cells. Without that ancient symbiosis, complex life would never have emerged. So in a way, every breath you take is thanks to a really successful case of bacterial hostage negotiation. But wait, doesn't bacteria equals bad? We're taught from childhood to scrub, sanitize, and fear germs. So isn't housing trillions of them, well, dangerous? Not exactly. Take kissing. A single passionate kiss transfers about a billion bacteria between mouths. But don't panic. Your resident microbes quickly evict any freeloaders. Most foreign bacteria are gone within a day. Sure, once in a while a virus sneaks in and causes a cold, but out of tens of thousands of microbial species in our bodies, only around 1,400 are known to cause disease. That's under 5%. The bad ones are loud, yes, but they're the minority. The other 95%, they're essential. Think of them as an invisible organ. Take digestion. Humans can make around 20 digestive enzymes, but gut microbes can produce thousands. In fact, a good chunk of the food you eat is technically for your bacteria. They break it down, poop out nutrients, and voila. 10% to 15% of your daily energy comes from these microscopic helpers. They're also biochemical wizards. Gut microbes manufacture vitamins like K and B12, plus anti-inflammatory compounds that your own cells can't make. They help process food, support your immune system, and even mess with your mind. Yep, over 90% of your serotonin, a key chemical for mood and appetite, is produced in your gut thanks to a tag team of microbes and intestinal cells. Your bacteria can communicate with your brain via the vagus nerve or bloodstream, influencing how you feel and behave. Ever crave sugar out of nowhere? That could be sugar-loving bacteria manipulating your taste buds to feed their addiction. Creepy? Maybe. But hey, if you're happy, they're happy. Of course, not all microbes are angels. Think of our relationship like a peace treaty. As long as we coexist and keep balance, everything's fine. But disrupt that balance, say, by using antibiotics and trouble brews. Some bacteria that are usually harmless seize the moment to act out. One infamous example is Clostridium difficile a nasty microbe that can take over after antibiotics wipe out its competitors, causing severe gut inflammation. Antibiotics are life-saving, no doubt, but they're also blunt instruments, like nukes in a microbial war. 
They kill bad guys and good guys alike. A few rounds of treatment and some beneficial microbes may never return. Over time, each generation inherits a slightly weaker microbiome, possibly explaining why kids today seem more vulnerable to illness. And here's the real kicker. Bacteria evolve fast. They reproduce every 20 minutes. And when one randomly mutates to resist antibiotics, it doesn't just survive, it thrives. Worse, it can share those resistance genes with others, even across species, using something scientists call horizontal gene transfer, basically microbial gossip. That's how superbugs emerge, bacteria that resist nearly all known antibiotics. Today, these infections kill about 700,000 people annually, and that number's climbing. Two-thirds of bacteria inside us are already resistant to at least one antibiotic. The day when none of our drugs work anymore, it's getting dangerously close. In a world of steel and sanitizer, we try to distance ourselves from microbes. But we're not islands. We're ecosystems. We can't dominate microbes forever. Not with bleach, not with pills. Instead, we need a truce. Use antibiotics wisely. Eat fiber, respect your flora, support your immune system by taking care of your microbial roommates. You're taking care of yourself. After all, microbes have been shaping life on Earth for four billion years. We've only been around for a blink. Without their invisible groundwork, we'd still be sludge on a rock. So next time you look in the mirror, remember, that's not just you staring back. It's a multi-species alliance, and it's thriving.